Did I have to say I don't remember it? <laughs> good morning, good morning. That, that's all right, Allison. I caught you live. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna just start off. I'm not even gonna. It's not gonna be professional. You got Jeff today. You don't have Ray. This isn't gonna go like you think it should. We're gonna start off by noting the fact that I just realized that we were late coming live because Allison and I were just talking. So. <laughs> Like, that's just the reality of what it is. Um, but we were talking about an awesome educator or many awesome educators. So, like, that's a positive, right? Right. But we are here. This is your daily drop for Thursday, December 16th, 2021. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. And we are chatting with the amazing Allison Apsey, one of my favorite people in the entire world. Oh, Jeff. And, and what's crazy is she's not that far away from me. So, like, it's, you know, I don't have to go that far. She says, go north a little bit to that right place up there um but we're gonna chat a little bit we're gonna talk um i'm gonna make you tell us about your books and all the amazing things you do and we'll talk about our some of the stuff for for this week we got some good news and some holiday celebrations and things of that nature as well i'm realizing right now how bad am i that i didn't even realize that we didn't even have the right background on <laughs> i'm so fired allison it's not even funny at this oh point. you make me so happy ray You're is at home going yesterday. why did not i me. let this happen <laughs> What? I thought we were going to do a brain break, too. I, like, I mean, I was rolling with it. I, I, I think mine might still be on a break from last night. So, <laughs> all right. So, if everyone can do me a huge favor, um, comment in the comments and let me know how you're not telling Ray about this. And hopefully she's sleeping in or something this morning. But we're going to be back in a few seconds. And we're going to reset and do this the right way with Allison. <laughs> All right, good morning. This is your daily drop-in for Thursday, December 16th. And this is, in fact, your daily drop-in. And we are still live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. And Allison is, for some reason, still here. I'm going to go through this with me. So um, good morning, friend. How are you? I am wonderful. Yeah, you just made me, you made my morning. Because when I was on with Ray, like, she was, like, super professional. And I was a hot mess because of, like, what had happened. I'm the hot mess today. It makes me feel much better about myself, so thank you very much. Jeff. Well, you know, I aim to please. Um, <laughs> and I figure your your life is probably crazy enough as a, 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 a elementary principal uh, in this crazy world we're in, so why not, you know, let you know that we're all crazy, even we're when we're not it. elementary principals. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's all good. So if I can be your hot mess, then that's what I'll do. But but how are you? How's your week going right now? Are you done after this week? Do you yeah, still have it, a couple it, days? Or? We're doing like the five days of Christmas. And our teachers, of course, are celebrating our students and creating special events and experiences for them. And so this week, I'm doing the same for teachers, along with um, help of my incredible office staff. So we did breakfast for them on Monday. We did a tea on Tuesday. Yesterday, we had lunch. Today, we're doing the gift of time and giving them an extra hour in their day. And um, I'm just creating a space where they can go and have a snack and hydrate and write a Christmas card to a loved one if they'd like to, or they can just go out to breakfast, whatever they want to do. Yeah. And then tomorrow we have like a crazy Christmas day. Um, but this is real life. Like we have a sub shortage. We have a crazy <laughs> windstorm happening right now in West Michigan. Um, that is worse than the storm that sunk the Edmund Fitzgerald, if anybody knows that story. And my power was out. This is me getting ready in the dark. So I apologize for you that. You did well. You did well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I think like we have many students and staff are going to come in feeling like a little discombobulated after. Well, it's the crazy windstorm. It's going until like yeah. four o'clock today. No kidding. And then now are you done tomorrow? Then do you start break then or do you have a couple of days next week? No. I mean, yeah. Crazy Christmas Day is the culmination of this week. And okay. And this done. year at Quincy Elementary. Like, <laughs> and then we come back on January 3rd to okay. a fresh new calendar year. And yeah, exciting learning. Back to it. So I want to get into all the craziness and in your gift of time. But before that, just in case anybody is not aware of who you are, can you give us the quick intro of Allison? I mean, I know, I know you were here with Ray like a month ago. Yeah. Um, and you've been, you know, been part of this family, this community for a long time. But people 
find this show and they might not know who you are. So can you give us a quick intro of who is Alice Mapsy? Yes. So number one, I am a huge fan of the Teach Better team and um, love being here with you. I also am, uh, gosh, this is my 24th year or something in education. And I became a principal really early in my career, just circumstances kind of aligned where I became a leader in the, the building I was working in and then became, you know, an official leader. So this is my 19th year as a principal, which. Wow. So like, only like five or so years in and you were, wow. Right. I taught multi-age classes. Okay. So I taught grades three, four, five, six, seven, and eight in those five years. Like I obviously don't like to like get comfortable in positions or, or grade <laughs> levels. Like I like to switch it up, but as I mean, a huge benefit as a principal to have had experience teaching all yeah. those grade levels. Yeah. Um, so that's. And, I, and you I, never get comfortable as a principal, right? No. <laughs> like, if you get comfortable, like maybe it's time to move on because <laughs> yes. No, there's new challenges all the time. Um, and so I'm in West Michigan. I'm in Zeeland. Michigan is where I'm a principal. I grew up in Grand Rapids. And I was my I started my um, leadership career in Traverse City, Michigan. Um, <laughs> and so I also, um, five years ago, I got connected. And like, that's how I found the Teach Better team. And it's how I started blogging in 2015 that then translated. So I blog on a site called Serendipity in Education. And um, so that started in 2015 and it, it ended up that I have, I'm writing my fifth book right now. Like, like this, you know, book I number came five this now? writing journey late in life too. Yes. Wow. Isn't that insane? So, all right. So right off the bus. Um, we have a mistake in Michigan. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Karen's okay. in Michigan. Like yes. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can, I, I, I want to know, I want to see hey, if I can get it. So there's the path of serendipity. The Prince of Serendipity, my Serendipity Journal. Oh, the, oh come on. This, <laughs> serendipity, this, this, it's Serendipity. What's through, the last one? Yeah. <laughs> through the lens of Serendipity. Through the lens of Serendipity. Okay, I got but the other, I got them, right? So I got three out of four, right? You did great. Wow, yes. that's awesome. I'm a fan. I so can't. I have, two books I think for grown-ups. I think I have most of them on my bookshelf. I got to find them. There's a lot over there, but yes. So two books for educators, grown-ups, and then a picture book that's called The Princes of Serendip that mm -hmm. tells the origin of the word serendipity. and the, Or it's a retelling of the origin of the word serendipity. And then um, a middle grades realistic fiction chapter book <laughs> called The Serendipity Journal. Um, so, I'll, I mean, I don't like to stay in the same genre either. Yeah, you bounce right? all over. But 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 a, a connected theme, which is really cool. Um, yeah. So, so it's the... the, the is the, yes. fifth, is the fifth book connected to serendipity? No, it's or? a little different. But oh. I'll just share just a little bit about that. My obsession with serendipity. It did, yes. it did definitely start watching the 2000 movie starring John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale. Great movie. Great movies. Great so movie. such a sweet rom-com. Love, yes. Uh, so, um, but it, like, I actually, I was teaching seventh and eighth <clears throat> graders and I was teaching a character education class and I knew, oh, thanks, Elijah. You're the best. I knew that if, I called a character education class, character education for seventh and eighth graders. They would be like rolling their eyes as they're walking in the door. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do to me? This is that thing. So I called the class serendipity. And that was back in like um, 2001, 2002, after I'd seen the movie. And we really talked about looking for happy accidents in our lives. And then that just kind of became like a philosophy in my life. And is that if we move through our lives looking for beautiful lessons and happy accidents and everything we experience, then we live richer, fuller, and certainly, you know, happier lives. I did a TEDx talk that's called Serendipity is Everywhere. And um, it's funny because I get view or I get comments on it that say, um, you know, great talk, but she doesn't really know what serendipity means. And I'm like, well, actually, like I can open a dictionary and read the definition of serendipity just like anyone else can. But mm -hmm. to me, it just is, it's more than that. And that's just the way that I've embraced serendipity yeah. in my life. So the new book is called um, Leading the Whole Teacher. Well, that's the working title. My friend, my friend Brad Gustafson suggested, um, you know, as I was talking with him about the book, 
he said, well, what about serving the whole teacher? Which I don't know, mm. like if it, which, which title is going to, what, what the actual title is going to be. But the concept is to take that philosophy of, of serving the whole child in schools and lay that over the idea of how can we serve and support the whole teacher in schools. And I yeah. cannot imagine a time when that's more needed than right now. So I'm yes. like, I feel this urgency to get the manuscript completely drafted and get going in the editing process, but I'm at about 70% right now. Okay. And who are you? Are you allowed to tell us who you're working on that with? Oh yeah. Yes. Um, DBC is publishing. DBC again. Yeah. I, I figured. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so, so you're about 70% done. So probably still a good six to eight months away from that probably. Right. Right. Give or take. Like, I have high hopes for Christmas break. To, to get the rest of it done, to knock out the right, to, right, to write, yes. I love it. Okay, so, all right, so now that, that, that ties in really well. You were talking about the, the, the whole teacher and stuff, and, and you mentioned earlier that today um, you're giving your teachers the gift of time. Yep. Which I think is particularly interesting and, and awesome because I also know that, like, you're dealing with a sub shortage. You were, like, literally, like, finalizing a sub, I think, mm -hmm. as we got connected, and yet you're still going to give your teachers an hour of time. How are you pulling that off? Um, well, two, two part question. One, how are you pulling that off? And then I want you to go into why that's so important to you to do that. Right. Yeah. So we do have, um, guest teachers. Like we just, we, like we have some, uh, college students who are already back. Okay. So we just tapped into people that we knew would be, um, around and available and then support staff, um, you know, helping out here and there. I don't want to take their whole day with, you know, bouncing around and stuff sure, because I want sure. them to get the gift of time also. Um, and then, you know, like I thought, well, I might just have to cancel all of my uh, meetings this morning and sub for this because we have the sub shortage, like whatever mm -hmm. it takes to, to make it happen, kind of all hands on deck. But I, uh, my secretary and I were working really hard to make sure that like all of our support staff had signed up for a time also. So, just um, breathing room is so yeah. important right now. And, and it's not like it's time for sure, but it's also um, working alongside staff to make sure that they're not worrying about everything because there's so much to worry about right now. And that worry load is so heavy. And then in the school, there also has to be physical space. So we have, um, we have a lounge where teachers can go and get work done, but that's a pretty public area. We also have a Zen zone, which is an office that we converted into this like beautiful oasis for staff where they can go and get regulated and, and calm down and, and they could work in there if they wanted. They could be in there with a, a colleague if they wanted to just sit and chat, but that physical space. And today that space is going to be the library um, where I just put up like Christmas music and that like fireplace background and we'll have snacks and, um, Christmas cards for them to create for a colleague. And um, so just oh, space in general is so important right now. And, and I've caught you smiling several times and because I know you can see the comments coming, coming through. So I want to throw a few of them up because we got people are all over the place right now. Um, Dave, I, I mean, I, yeah, Jeff actually <laughs> looks, <that's good. laughs> Andrea's pumped about meeting. Um, so Andrea yeah. was supposed to be at 2019, but she just had a baby, so she, oh. she couldn't make it, so she's excited. That's Adam, good morning. Good to see you. Um, Dave, just giving you some more love. Dave, oh, we, Dave. we know that Dave is a big fan. Um, well, and I appreciate what he said about not sugarcoating, and that's a work in progress because I ha have had to work on sitting in hard feelings um, and not being, like, toxically optimistic. And as I've gotten older, like yeah. I understand that we can have, like we can drop below the line and then work together to come back up above it. And, and we're supposed to drop below the line. That yeah. spectrum of feelings we have, like we're supposed to have all of them. I, I agree. And I think some, some people are touching on here about like the, the idea that you're getting down in there, that you're, that you're willing to cancel your meetings and put something on, a, on your plate for another day so that you can help sub and stuff like that. And something that was getting me is like, you talk about like it's it's breathing room, but it's getting there with them. I I think there's there's such value in them simply seeing you trying mm -hmm. to do these things um, mm -hmm. because the teachers are aware that you're dealing with sub shortages and and all these things. So like the fact that you're doing whatever it takes 
to to give them even if it wasn't an hour if it was 15 minutes or whatever it might be like that is huge i had a conversation a few weeks back with a, a teacher who was sharing how it was such an amazing thing that their uh their building leader did and all it was was literally five minutes but they were mm -hmm. given permission to take an extra five minutes in between classes and she said it's crazy to think that five minutes but she's like it's changed my entire day mm -hmm. because i have five minutes and i know i have permission to like take those five minutes so like that is, it's it's crazy it's crazy powerful uh during the time right now um it's it's sad that you have to do everything you have to do to make that happen but i love that you're doing that and i love your take on the, the positivity because you are people who who know you and talk about you talk about how positive you are and how you light up room and stuff but yeah. i think it's really important to note that like guess what allison's not happy all the time all day every day she gets stressed she does that and it's okay to not to like you said dip below the line and come back mm -hmm. up and and i think the the key is that we can that we're able to bring ourselves back up when we need to and able to allow ourselves to, to kind of flow like that. So um, I love that. I love the way you lead. If oh. I was a teacher, if I could somehow get qualified to be a teacher, I would want to come work at your school. Oh, that's so I want to just share something with you. That's really yes. important what do you, to me. What do you have? So this is okay. It looks like Christmas threw up in my office. Like let's <laughs> be real for a minute, but this sign right here, it says, congratulations, welcome to the queue. Yes. I've been here. This is my eighth year at the queue. Mm -hmm. That sign will never move. Is that from when you was, first came? That was when I walked in the door. I had, wow. I walked into teachers holding that sign. And, and it just reminds me of like the expectation and the hope that they had when I walked in the door for the first time. And I never want to, to let go of that. Mm. It's an, that. A, just a great reminder every single day. I love that you still have that. That's awesome. I love that they made that for you. First off, and I love oh, you have they're it, so. amazing. It's awesome. Well, we're gonna keep talking with Allison. We're gonna we're gonna flip right now, and I, I want to talk just a little bit about our our theme for the week, and then I do want to get into good news story and some holidays. Um, we're gonna have a little bit shorter deal dropping because you know Allison has to work yeah. and stuff. Uh, so, so we're gonna. I don't know. This is somehow part of my job. I don't know how this how I pulled this off, but um, <laughs> so we, we, I want to get into. That. I want to I want to ask you a couple questions and and then get into the holidays and the celebrations and all that awesomeness. So we'll be back in a second with uh, getting into our brainstorm bank here. All right, welcome back to Daily Drop-In, where we have the correct background on now, and we are live streaming from Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch with the amazing Allison Apsey. Allison, um, so much awesomeness already this morning. Uh, this week's theme is universal design and learning, and there's already been a lot of really great conversation on how we can do that in our classrooms and what that means and the components that go into. And I think what I wanted to kind of ask you around this was universal design. There's a lot that goes into that. There's it's a lot around the environment and the culture that is created within the classroom, and the teachers and stuff. And I think a, a really important component to that is the um, is the culture created in a building and or district, but in a building that allows teachers to do the things that they need to do to support their students the best. And I know I don't work for you, but I do know that in your building, your teachers have that. They have a culture, they have an environment that they know that they can do what they need to do. They can create the environments that they need to create for their students and all of their students to learn. I'd love to hear if you could share with us, how, how do you, you've been there for a while, you've been at your school for eight years, administrator for 19 something years, educator for more. How do you create at the queue? How do you and your team there create the culture and the environment for your educators, for your teachers, and your support staff to create the environments needed for students to thrive? I know that's a big question, but can you kind of paint that picture for us? She's saying hi. Look at it. She can't even not say hi. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think there's so many different components, but uh, I, I'm a leadership coach also, and I really think about. Um, this question that I got from one of uh, the people I'm coaching. And she said, so when you're like out at arrival, what do you do? And my response is I lead, <laughs> right? <laughs> like I look around all the time and figure out like, where is, where, where does that culture need to be built up? Like, mm -hmm. is that engaging with students? Is that bringing music out and wearing my jammy pack? Is that, um, walking around the building and checking in with staff, it's it's co constantly like kind of having your pulse on the how the vibe of the school and mm -hmm. how things are feeling. 
because it's so important to have an environment where it's full of um, joy and excitement and people are, feel comfortable taking risks. Like I, I love teacher evaluation and observations to me is a huge part of this because um, and I, I, I was going to say, I love when teachers are like, hey, I'm trying something new. Can you come in and just count that as an observation? I'm like, that is like huge success. Not only do they want me to come see them try something new, they want me to evaluate them trying something new. Like mm-hmm. what it, that, that just says remarkable things about how we view observation and evaluation. And, I, and there's article, a research article that's out on social media that is, talks about how teacher evaluation is, um, it was a, a, a it, it, research does not support that teacher evaluation equates to increased student achievement. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a failure, an, ex, an, ex, an experimental failure. And so then I really have to think about, and I have been, how do I use teacher observation evaluation that we're required to do in a way that's going to build up teachers, empower them, help me coach them and remove obstacles along their path so mm-hmm. that they're able to um, create the environments and the learning experiences that they w- they want to create for students. So really talking to them about their goals, supporting them with resources and, and research and books and whatever they're interested in. And just, um, you know, if I have teachers who are really interested in the science of reading, or if I have teachers that are really interested in like spider web discussions, like whatever, whatever they're interested in and want to try out with their students to increase student uh, learning opportunities and engagement, like just walking alongside them. So, so you've really flipped this evaluation process that honestly is, can be um, nerve wracking, uh, frustrating, and, and honestly scary for so many educators. And you're flipping it into an opportunity to, to partner with them, to have the, like the fact that a teacher will call you and be like, Hey, I'm doing something different. I have no idea if it's going to work <laughs> or flop. And I want you to evaluate me on this versus normally it's, Hey, let me set up my dog and pony show for you. Right. That's, that's incredible that that's the environment and, and the, the way that you built that. And I think, I mean, it's, it's not as easy as this, but the fact is like, if you just shift the way you're looking at that evaluation, as you have, eventually your teachers will realize that, Oh, this isn't, this isn't Allison's chance to come get me. It's she just wants to know what's going on so she can help me and we can partner and we can try new things like that. It, the risk taken there. And I, I know Karen's saying, oh, my gosh, we'd love to be evaluated that way. Right. To be able to to not only know that I can take risk, but know that I can literally have my evaluation on that. And it's not necessarily going to be judging me for whether this risk worked or not, but whether I'm doing the best I can for my students, whether I'm growing as an educator, whether, I, whether I'm doing those things. I think that's that's incredible. And there's there's a key right there. I think is huge is it shows trust. And yes. in my opinion, and full disclosure, never been a teacher, so I've never been evaluated as a teacher, nor has I have I ever done one as an admin, but I've been in a lot of other places where I've been evaluated and evaluated people, and nine out of ten times, it is just a control mechanism. That's all it is. Is It's about it, it's created for control, and there needs to be some evaluation and stuff like that, but I'm a huge believer in trusting your people. You put yes. them there for a reason. You, you've done it. You trust them. If you're not sure about someone, it's not about not trusting them and checking in. It's about finding ways that you can better support them so right. that you can then learn to trust each other and grow that. And so I think when teachers feel that trust, they, they get to flourish. They get to, they, cause they get to take those risks. They get to try new things. And they know it's not going to destroy their, their career or their year or their month, whatever. Like I, I love that. And I also love you, you, you started and I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I think it starts a big piece of it starts here. Um, and you started your, 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 your answer to me there, which was the start of the day. Yes. From from the start of minute when people start coming in, setting that culture up for your students and your staff um, to do that. And I need you to go just a little bit more in detail because I'm aware of it, of your jammy pack. Because I <laughs> forgot about it until you mentioned it. I feel like it's old news. Hang on. It's right here. Oh, my gosh. It, it's worth it. On. Listen, it might be old news to you and me, but someone's going to see this today and be like, oh, my gosh, I need a jammy pack. So... so- this is not a jammy pack is a brand. So this is not actually a jammy pack. This is um, the rager fanny and it's from um, <laughs> super real business. I do love this one. Um, it's a little less expensive than the jammy pack. Um, I actually heard about this on a show. You might know them. They're mojo in the morning. It's like a morning radio show. Yeah, they're syndicated know. a little bit, but they're out of Detroit okay, gotcha. area. And they were talking about this with um, like kids like partying on the beach. 
And I thought, oh, that would be awesome to have as a principal. Like, it's like walking down the hall, creating your own, like being in your own Disney musical. Um, And I actually, I think it was in 2017 or so, I ordered one. And I did order a jammy pack originally, and I did like a like the open box Facebook Live reveal and show, yeah. shared it with my students, and that just came up in my huh. memories recently. I mean, it's a fanny pack, but with built-in speakers. Yes, yes. Blue, is it just Bluetooth to your your phone? I assume. Yep, yep. So I just slide my phone inside. I have my. I just do playlists on iTunes, mm-hmm. and I um, avoid any you know commercials or costs or. Very important pedagogical question. Yes. What's in the fanny pack? Um, uh, oh, like a dove chocolate, <laughs> not important, it's and a Twix. I think these are like as I'm walking around, kids are giving me birthday treats, okay. And I just slide them. stuff in there. Um, yeah, lead positive sticker. This is from like a time when I presented. I, I mean, a teach better sticker could be in there, but usually it's just should be, should be, it should be in there. It's just my phone. Have you considered it. filling it with confetti? So that when you walk into a room <gasps> My or like glitter or something like, you know, I'm just, I could do that outside, like biodegradable confetti <gasps> mm-hmm. and like go out to recess and play the music and throw, oh my goodness, the kids would go nuts. They would love that. Especially if you, you need like a, like a pump up song and like when it, oh. when it, when it hits, you, you oh. let it go. Like, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I also, um, I have an app that I can use this as a micro or a speaker for a microphone. Oh, so you can talk a, into it and. Yeah. Yes. There's a little bit so of cool. delay, but that's kind of fun. And then I also have like a sound effects app on my phone. So like, as I'm doing a read aloud or something, I can, yeah, play yeah. sound effects. That's awesome. That's a many fun. uses. Um, I might get one just for my house. That could be fun. The sound yeah. effects or the microphone. Cause I would say stuff to my kids and then wait as it played through. Oh yeah, it would drive them nuts. Um, <laughs> but also the confetti thing. Um, I'm really thinking about that now. What, I'm trying to think of what song would be best for you to do that. Um, uh-huh. Like something you gotta look for, like the song. What are the pump up songs that like um, the Red Wings play or the Pistons or something like that play? And, like right. when they would come out, like the same, like Rocky or something. Like or Rocky, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna need you to have someone else. Film that so we can see that. Just yeah. Oh, you know that what happened. <laughs> I mean, is there any doubt? My kids yesterday, I was at a roller skating party for them, and they're like, "Are these pictures going on the weekly announcements?" I'm like, "What's my name, Mrs. Apsley?" I'm like, "Can you answer your own question?" They're like, "Oh yeah, they're yes. going on the weekly." <laughs> well, and that that there, I, I knew just it was a fun little joke, but like that that is again a uh, a confirmation of the the type of environment that you're building at the school where your kids just know that. Yeah. They know that Miss Epsi is, is, is going to share this. She's going to put it up. It's going to go on the announcements. Like, that's just super cool. And I think that's the – I I got to imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, that that didn't – all that didn't work and start happening in day one or year <laughs> one. No. That this is something that has taken a while to build over at the queue um, to, to create that culture. And I think that's really important to note also. Like, you don't just buy a fanny pack and suddenly your teachers know you trust them and stuff like that, right? It's – there's a lot that goes into that. That's not a, a easy process. And I think that's really important for, for leaders to know and for teachers to know as you build in your, in your classroom and amongst your colleagues, like it takes time to build that. Right. Um, especially if you happen to be in a place that maybe doesn't have a very good at culture currently, like it can take a long time to do that. So I think that's really key. Um, anyway, I love that. I love, I love the culture. I love the, I love the jammy pack. I forgot about it. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm going to Google them. Um, Anyway, that's great. I'm going to jump in. We're going to, we're going to switch over real quick, do some um, holiday celebrations and a, a quick good news story. Then we're going to let uh, Allison get off to uh, probably sub in today, it sounds like. Yeah, who and knows? <laughs> go from there. So. We just roll with the punches. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Daily Drop, and we're live right now on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. I've got Allison Absley with me here, and we're going to talk about a couple holidays. We've got a few holidays today, um, some important holidays from around the world and, and some that are just fun. Uh, so today's actually, uh, and I don't know if, I'm, if I say it right right or now, but Bahrain National Day, which is when um, Bahrainis celebrate their, um, their freedom and their independence. 
uh, which is incredible. It's also I think they celebrate both on the 16th and 17th, if I'm correct. Um, and then today's also Bangladesh Victory Day, which is not a celebration of their independence, but it's actually the the start of the war that actually led to their mm. their freedom as well. So it's it's something that they kind of start the celebration now, and it actually went for I believe nine months. I think it's in I can't remember when when their their independence. I should have studied better. But uh, two very important holidays there. Um, it's also uh, Kazakhstan's Independence Day. So celebrating that. I know here, obviously, in the United States, how how high we hold up Independence Day. So mm -hmm. it's important to remember that a lot of other folks have had Independence Day, and they they celebrate that too. So hopefully everyone um, connected to those countries are celebrating that. Uh, today is also for regions, and I got to make sure I get this right, so I'm clicking into this one. And by the way, this has come from nationaltoday.com. If you go there, they have a, it's a really great website where every day you can click on today's holidays, and it's just all the holidays from, from around the world. Um, but today is in South Africa. It's the Day of Reconciliation. And this is a day where they recognize racial injustices and bring to, to light um, both the, the history and, and the, the suffering, but also the growth that has happened. And each year, uh, there's a different theme that they go through on, on how to look back in the past. So another important day there for anyone in South Africa or from that region. And what else we got today? Some less... less um, less important holidays, but still fun, is Barbie and Barney Backlash Day. And all it says here is, let's just forget about Barbie and Barney for a while. Okay. <laughs> That's what it is. So. I mean, they weren't really top of mind anyway. Uh, but... Well, just in case they were, they shouldn't right. be, because today's the day that you should not think about. <laughs> and then this one I think you and I could probably get behind is National Chocolate Covered Anything Day. Oh, there's going to be plenty of that here. So find something chocolate covered or cover something in chocolate. And that's today. So uh, <laughs> there's your holidays for today. Um, a quick good news story is that there's a um, genetics research that has uncovered some, um, not, not, not a cure, but some, some new hope as they call it for folks that have stuttering um, complications. Hmm. Uh, and the papers published this, this week, uh, there's describing, they, they've, discover sort of the genetic architecture um, for the development of that. Cause up until now they haven't been able to figure out like what actually causes that. And so now they, they feel like this might be a breakthrough on figuring out what is the genetics that actually lead to stuttering and how can, because that's the next step to then maybe find a cure and a way for us to solve that. So always awesome when we see uh, breakthroughs in science or the start of a breakthrough in science, that's going to hopefully help a whole lot of people one day. So always good news story there too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a, a great, you know, our good news story is, is not just about celebrating good news and same with the holidays, but it's how can we take this into our classrooms and our, and our students. And I think if you look at the holidays today, several different countries from around the world that have independence days or, or, or celebrations going on where you can bring that to your kids to open their eyes up to how big the world and how different we all are and how we celebrate things differently. And then into, you know, the, the science, you can dive into the science and, and start uh, investigating, uh, the, the, the pain that folks go through who do deal with uh, speech impediments and stuttering specifically, and that sort of diversity that also exists in our world and a lot that you can take into your classroom. So hopefully that opens up some discussion amongst you and your students or you and your colleagues and you can go in there. Um, I am also celebrating today uh, a new holiday that I'm inventing, which is Jeff got to go live with Allison. <laughs> uh, it'll now be uh, annual and it'll be celebrated by walking into a room of your choosing to a song we are choosing, throwing confetti in the air. That is the Perfect. official celebration of our day. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm super excited that I got to go live with you today. Uh, here's the best part. So normally Ray does, I, I'm only on Mondays, Ray does all the lives. And she did, she had something on her calendar that she reached out like weeks ago and she's like, hey, can you take this Thursday? And I, of course, said, maybe who's on it? <laughs> and she said, she's, well, actually, no. She said, can you take it? There was, I don't think you were booked yet. And I found out it was you. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That works out well. And then a few days ago, she's like, I don't know what I had on Thursday. Like, I just had it blocked off, but I have no idea. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't know if she had something scheduled or whatever, but it's not there. And she's like, can I take Thursday back? And I said, no, <laughs> no, you can't. Aww. And I, I, I kind of guys them. They're like, why don't you take the morning off and relax? Yeah, oh, I appreciate it. I, I've told this story many times before. I think on live a few times before, but a story of if you haven't figured out what kind of person Allison is yet, Alice and I, well, gosh, when was, when did I come to Michigan? It was like before it was before COVID. So like sure. 78 years ago, yeah. I was driving up to, I was actually going to be in Grand Rapids, which is about an hour South of you, give or take 45 minutes South of you. Yeah. 
Sure. It's and actually not south, but I was driving in and I let you know, and you're like, oh, I'm actually flying in from, I think you're coming in from New York that same day. And so you got in a few hours before, flew into Grand Rapids, drove home, waited for a couple hours, and then drove back down to Grand Rapids to have dinner. And we, we got to hang out and stuff. And for me, I was like, you just were away from your family, flew home, like did the whole travel thing, and still drove 45 minutes just to have a 45-minute <laughs> meal with me. And that, to me, was super special. I don't forget that. And that, Aww. to me, that's just the that's just who you are. And I love that. I'm so excited for that you're going to be back out for the conference in 22, I which I don't know if we've actually told anyone that you're coming to the conference, but I just did. So I, if you've been I with us for the last, it. if you've been with us for the last 35 minutes, congratulations. You got some insider information, but of course <laughs> she's going to be there. Like, of course. Ooh, like everyone knows Alan's going to, Alison's going right. to be there. So uh, I, I appreciate you a whole lot. I appreciate everyone watching. I um, hope you take some of the good news story of the holidays to your, your class or your colleagues. Um, and if you aren't already connected with Allison, make sure you do that. I'm looking at, I'm trying to look at all the, I know I love Karen's giving here. me tips of bookstores yeah. to visit in Grand Yeah, Rapids. so Karen, Karen's not, I don't think, very far from you. She's uh, in Muskegon, which is north of us. And she, I don't oh, know if Karen has power right now because I live in Grand Haven and I did not have power. Karen, do you have oh. power or are you just like cruising on your, your data plan right now? Um, she, <laughs> she did say earlier, like her, I think she might be off work because I think maybe, I wonder if they don't have power up there. She mentioned like her, one of her jobs, she, I think she said two two thirds of her job were out. I didn't know she had three jobs, but oh. Karen does. Karen does work with us. She's one of our blog editors. But oh, um, yeah. Karen, let us know. Do you have power up there? Um, so 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 we had a lot of wind here, but you guys had like like sixty five like mile an hour wow. wind. I live in the middle of the woods, so when the power went out and you can like hear everything, um, I was really scared about a tree dropping on oh, my. Oh yeah, house. no kidding. But I think one of the benefits of living in the middle of the woods is the wind is broken up by lots break, of yeah 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 i would imagine it would hit you there's a lot of branches down yeah one road was closed on my way to school so mm. so Karen she has power, it has power school. but no school did they cancel school so you could go to yoga is that what's going on because <laughs> that's some power it's national karen day it's national karen it's national yeah uh, national karen goes to yoga day um well, whatever it is enjoy enjoy yoga uh and allison i'm gonna let you go i know you got uh a lot to do there with your with your staff um, and continuing your, your last two days of the, the, the Christmas celebration before break. So enjoy that. And uh, Merry Christmas to you, my friend. Oh, I appreciate Merry you. Christmas. And everyone else, we will see you. We'll be back live again uh, tomorrow morning with Ray and Brad. So don't don't uh, miss that. We will be still live next week, um, uh, all week next week as well. So we will see you all week next week as well. So if you're off school, get up early and join us, I guess, yeah. or, you know, or just listen to the For podcast sure. later, sleep in, yeah. but anyway, appreciate you. Love you all. Hope you have an amazing week. Allison, thank, thank you. you so much. We'll see you. Thank you. Have a great day. Merry Christmas. Bye all.